Hello friends! Today I am sharing with you my discovery that I have Cherokee ancestry and I am taking apart a little jacket that I bought at a thrift store and using it as a pattern to make a new one. So stick around! Hello friends! I have a little project here that I've been thinking about for a while. This is a piece that I found at Goodwill. It's still got the tag on it. It's a little jacket that's 100% silk. It's kind of a summer weight thing. It's got kind of a three-quarter sleeve kind of short. It's very simple. There's a seam down the back, um, a little seam here, here. The sleeves have two seams, so that's a two-piece sleeve. Um, so basically, it's a pretty simple thing. Seam here, dart here, side seam here, and then they've come along and done this um, binding on the edge that goes right to here on the hem. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it apart and use the pieces as a pattern. I haven't decided whether I'm going to use the fabric as the base because there's no way I'm going to wear this color ever. So <laughs> so I, it would be no loss to just keep the fabric under there and use it as a base. I'm a little concerned about the embroidered dots showing through though, so I haven't quite decided on that. I do have some hand dyed silk that I can use as the lining. So the basic idea here is to use this little coat as a pattern and see how it goes. And I've been thinking about this for a while. I just haven't gotten up the, I don't know, I haven't gotten up the nerve to do it yet, but that is changing because I'm going to just dive in. And you know, the, the worst that can happen is that I can lose my uh, less than five dollar investment that I've got in this. That's the worst that can happen and so that doesn't seem like a big risk. I think it's gonna be okay. <laughs> so here we go. I'm gonna take my scissors to it and see what we can do about making another one of these uh, without a really hideously ugly button this time. <laughs> Gosh, that's awful. It's just awful. Anyway, it's time to give it a whirl. <laughs> I am so happy to report that I have found an American Indian in my ancestry. I am so happy about this. Um, this gentleman is Cherokee from the Wolf Clan. And I, I looked up the Cherokee flag. I wish I could find... Um, I wish I could find a Cherokee flag and a sticker. I have like the Swiss, um, the people who came from Switzerland or lived in Switzerland and then uh, came over, I have them under the Swiss flag. Um, but I don't have one of these for the Cherokee Nation, which I'm a, li a little annoyed about, but what can you do? So it's an orange flag. So I have marked these guys with um, these guys, this woman with an orange dot to indicate that they are uh, Wolf Clan Cherokee American Indian and um, let's see this gentleman um, was born in Bradley County Tennessee and died in Rogers County Oklahoma so he was part of that migration and another interesting detail about him is that his first spouse was Sarah Elizabeth Day they were married on the 21st of October 1847. His second spouse was Sarah Elizabeth, uh, same first and second names, different last name this time, Grigsby was her last name, and she was born on 21 May 1863. So they're both born, uh, married on the 21st of the month, first name and middle name the same between spouse number one and spouse number two. So let's see. With spouse number one, he had one, two, three, four, five. He had five uh, children. And then with spouse number two, it's this whole other list. So this was a very prolific gentleman. <laughs> but um, I am absolutely de delighted to find a First Nation um, person in my ancestry. It makes me feel slightly more actual American and not just colonial American. <laughs> Immigrant American, you know? I mean, there's the whole thing. It's just, it's, it's complicated, isn't it? It's complicated. So yeah, that was really fun to discover that. I, um, 
I read an interview. Um, somebody interviewed him, this gentleman, and wrote down what he said. He had a white wife, which, you know, my ancestors were, I mean, look at me, my ancestors were white. And then when you look in the census, he's marked with an I, and the wife is always marked with a W for white, and then all the children are marked with I's. Because that's the way they viewed things back in those days. Is if one of your if one of the parents was Indian, then the kids were all Indian. I don't know that that makes sense to me. I don't know that it doesn't make sense. It's just, it's just really interesting. <laughs> it's just you know, it's interesting. So um, I actually got to see some of the um, some of, just there's it seems like there's quite a few um, available ways to get information if you have ancestry in the in the um, Cherokee Nation. So that was really cool to be able to find that much information about this gentleman. So my um, American Indian is my third great grandfather, Richard Taylor Parks is his name and he's Cherokee. And then his mom, my fourth great grandmother is Susanna Fox Taylor. So. I will continue to see how much I can find, but I'm also um, just noting, and this is this is uh, a little awkward, I guess you would say, um, that this American Indian woman, her children's names are um, Ruth Parks, Almira Parks, Jenny Parks, George Washington Parks, Thomas Jefferson Parks, Richard Taylor Parks, Calvin Monroe Parks, William Lenore. I mean, we've got some pretty Samuel Houston Parks. We got some pretty big names. <laughs> got some pretty, pretty big names in there. So um, I guess that she viewed these characters in our history as honorable people that could be and, and named kids for them. It's interesting um, because you know, in the Mennonite Mennonite Amish world, you're naming people after family members. So there's kind of like this group of names that are repeated over and over again. Um, so in that particular point in history, let's see, she was born, uh, February 15th, 1798 and died 1876. That particular moment in history, they were naming kids after the powers that be. So that was interesting. Yeah. So, um, having a little bit of Native American blood, um, feels really good to me. I, I, um, unfortunately, it didn't actually change the color of my skin. I've always longed to have darker skin, but um, <laughs> it's really cool. I, I'm really happy about it. I would love to find many more discoveries, but I, I fear my uh, ancestry is pretty, <laughs> is pretty uh, um, you know, 75% Swiss, which is okay. I got no complaints. I just was delighted to find somebody else not Swiss. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> yeah, really, really cool. I, you know, it's it's a little hard to see that uh, born in Tennessee and died in Oklahoma thing because that's a story. That's a real story right there. Um, and hopefully, I can learn more about what that story is, what that meant. You know, what did it mean? What was that journey like? Um, what was the date of that journey? Was it the Trail of Tears that we hear, or was it a, a different uh, event in our history? It'll be interesting. I'd like to do a little bit more research on that and find out more about what that meant. But, you know, leaving your homeland is um, serious stuff. So hopefully he was able to do that on his own volition. That's my hope. But, you know. It is what it is. So yeah, I'm really happy about the discovery that I have a little bit of Native American blood in my in my veins. A little tiny bit of American Indian DNA, which makes me happy. <laughs> I did not know that, but I'm so happy I know it now. All right, I've got the jacket cut up. I have the pieces ironed, and I think it's time to go ahead and be thinking about what the next layer is. Now, this was surprisingly time consuming. So taking an existing garment and cutting it apart takes every bit as much time as getting a pattern, choosing a pattern, 
cutting it out, getting it ready to use. So it's not necessarily a time saver, but I'm, I don't know, kind of trying to make a few decisions along through here on um, whether it's time to use these pieces to create a pattern or whether I go ahead with the original plan, which was to use this as a foundation for adding uh, other silk scraps too to make the jacket that I want. So, and since I have spent a couple of hours now playing with shrimp colored silk, I'm going to go make some shrimp and grits because I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for watching today. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. Maybe even share the video with a friend who might appreciate it. Join us every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern for Weave and Mend Live. That is a live where I will weave and you can put your prayer requests in the chat box and I will pray for you as I weave. That is a very, um, that is a place where the Lord and I just, I love, I love how that works. I love that my hands are busy and my spirit is, is full at the same time. Uh, you can read more about our tiny house experience, our tiny house life in uh, the description. But you can also find out there is a playlist called the Smart Sexy Small House that you can learn more about the house that we currently live in and some of the projects that we've done around here, which is a lot of fun. Also, uh, on the playlist, you will find Faith, Art, and Tiny House, the podcast, and you can see a lot of back episodes there, and there's some really great content there, so check that out. There will be more new stuff coming in the new year, so there's something to look forward to. I'm kind of trying to find my groove here. <laughs> I will eventually get the hang of this. Thank you so much for watching today. Thank you for being a part of this conversation, and uh, God bless you and keep you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>